Hi, my name's Sid and I'm currently a senior in high school. If you read the title of the video, you probably understand that this video is just going to be me talking about my journey to getting to the Platinum Division of the USICO, the United States of America Computing Olympiad. Um, in addition to that, I'll just be leaving my thoughts on the whole process and maybe Olympiads in high school in general. Since I'm a senior, uh, I'm probably not going to be doing a whole lot of USICO prep this year, so I was like I might as well just talk about what my journey's been like and then hopefully maybe help other people get started with competitive programming. I'm not great, but I guess I'm decent enough to get to Platinum. Um, so without further ado, let's just talk about when I started doing Yusuko, how I got into it, and then how I got to Platinum because that's what you clicked on the video for. So I think my first Yusuko contest, uh, I gave it in the... December of my sophomore year, which was in 2018, I think. So December 2018 um, was my first contest. Uh, and if you're not aware how the USICO works, it's there are four divisions. You have bronze, go, uh, silver, gold, and platinum. Uh, obviously, there are four divisions, and you advance from one division to the next based on your performance um, in a contest in a certain division. Yusuko holds four contests every academic year from December to March and then if you get a perfect score in a contest in one, um, over the period of that contest then you're automatically promoted to the next level and then you can take the next level's contest in the same month. However, if you manage to just get over the cutoff score without actually getting a perfect score then you have to wait for the next month to take the contest for the next level. And I'd actually heard about competitive programming, um, I think it was towards the end of my ninth grade year, when I still uh, lived in another state and before I moved to my current state. Uh, I was, at that point, I didn't have really any Olympiad experience at all. I hadn't done the AMCs, uh, I hadn't done competitive programming, I hadn't taken physics Olympiad, I hadn't done really any academic competitions at all, so taking the USICO was actually going to be my first uh, ever academic Olympiad or competition, one might say. So, the first thing, I I've been programming for a long time. I think I've been programming since I was eight, but I hadn't really ever uh, gotten like a foundational uh, base in data structures and algorithms. So, learning about competitive programming kind of excited me because it gave me a avenue to explore that, in addition to, if we're being totally transparent here, something that would help me um, buff up my college application in terms of extracurriculars and awards. And I hope that's enough to carry me to a good school uh, in the current college application process. Uh, but that aside, uh, yeah, so I took my first contest in 2018, uh, December, and this contest I used Python as my primary language. And Python, I wouldn't necessarily recommend for competitive programming, and I'll get into that in just a bit. But with bronze, all you really need to know is like some basic problem solving techniques, and then you need to master, um, well, not, not even master, you just need to know the syntax of some programming language. At the time I took it, efficiency wasn't really that big of a deal in bronze, but I'm pretty sure bronze has gotten harder in the last few years, so you might need to do a little bit more work than I did. And once you know a programming language and you have some problem solving skills under your belt, you should be able to do successfully well on bronze after attempting some practice problems and be able to be promoted to silver. Uh, I got, I think, I don't think I got every question right on this contest actually. I think I missed the very last test case on problem three. And if you haven't taken Yusuke before, each contest consists of three problems, but the one in March has four. And I actually got the last test case on three wrong, which means, uh, and each problem is divided into 10 test cases. And this is just meant to see if your program is accounting for everything that could happen in a problem. And I'm pretty sure I got the last test case wrong. Uh, I don't remember why, but I did. So I didn't get a perfect score, but I got a score of 987 out of 1,000. Wait, 1,000 minus 33 is not 987, but okay, enough. I got one test case wrong and I basically got a perfect score. So that means I, I was pretty happy with these results because that means I kind of knew something, but I kind of uh, underestimated 
the amount of work uh, that I actually need to put in to get from silver to gold. So I kind of really didn't do any prep in between bronze and silver uh, in that one month. So I didn't do too hot uh, on the silver contest. But in order to prepare for silver, uh, I started to learn C++ because that is a very good uh, language for competitive programming. It's fast, it's efficient, it has a lot of awesome uh, built-in functions uh, into its standard template library that let you get really good at comp that let you implement things pretty fast, and then they run fast too. And that's a big part of competitive programming is being able to think up solutions quickly and then coding those solutions quickly and making sure those solutions run quickly. It's a lot of going fast, 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 fast. Um, I actually learned C++ with a book called uh, Principles of Algorithmic Problem Solving, and I will link that down in the description if you're interested in reading it. Uh, it covers C++ pretty well, and then it just goes into um, algorithms that are important for competitive programming, and just like foundational algorithms that you would cover in like a first year undergraduate course, uh, as well as data structures that are important um, for competitive programming. So as I was working through that, um, I also did a lot of practice problems on things. Uh, I also did a lot of practice problems uh, on a lot of like competitive programming sites like Code Forces and AtCoder. Uh, both are very helpful. And once I was after that, I was pretty confident. So in February of 2018, I took the silver contest, got a perfect score, and then I ICP'd, uh, which stands for in contest promotion, to gold. Uh, I took the gold contest and I didn't do too hot because they didn't have a lot of practice with gold questions. In March, I took gold again, and then I failed again. I didn't get to platinum in my sophomore year of high school, uh, which was a problem. Uh, wasn't really a problem, just disappointing to me because I just like missed out because I just didn't like have enough practice, and that's just something that I neglected. The really the best way to actually get good at competitive programming is just, just practice, 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 practice. But I was a little bit lazy, so I didn't practice, 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 practice. In 11th grade, and then I wasted that summer by not practicing. Um, but I did learn some other cool things like machine learning, um, neural networks, and a lot. And if you want to read stuff about that, I will leave a link to my blog articles on those. Uh, then in 11th grade, uh, I went to a new high school. Uh, it's, a, it's a boarding high school. And so I was adjusting to that. So I didn't spend those first few months like preparing really well either. But in December, uh, I took the gold contest again. And although I didn't uh, promote, I, I was pretty close. I was very close. I got two out of the three questions right. And I was, I was pretty confident that given a little bit of effort, I could nail the next, I could uh, nail the next contest and then get to gold. Uh, this 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 was a little bit this was a bit of misplaced confidence and then I ended up uh, not qualifying for platinum in the January contest of this year yeah so at this point it's been almost like a year and a month of me doing competitive programming and I hadn't gone to plat yet but thankfully in the February contest of this year of 2020 I made platinum. And all it took was one year and two months. And that's a little bit uh, longer than it could probably take a lot of people because I just hadn't been trying as hard as I could have. And I'm just going to go talk a little bit about like just a few things that I think everybody should do to um, like get good at competitive programming. And obviously, I'm not the best competitive programmer. There are a lot of cooler dudes out there like William Lin and Erikto. I think that's how you say his name. And they're really, really good. And you can go learn from them. I'll link their channels in the description as well. So the first thing I really need to do was learn C++. This technically could be like Java or some other programming language. But I like C++ very fast. A lot of cool competitive programmers I know use it. And I like it. It's a very fun language. Right, except when it gives you segmentation faults. Learn C++. I'll leave some resources for that in the description. I'll also leave an article I wrote on this uh, in the description as well. The next thing after that is when you're learning C++, um, you want to learn algorithm analysis, which is just uh, basically saying, okay, 
So you have this solution to a problem, but how fast will it run as a function of the program's input? Is it going to run in exponential time? Is it going to run um, in linear time? Is it going to run in logarithmic time? So how fast is it going to be? Is it going to be fast enough to solve the problem in a good amount of time? And then after that, just learn a lot of problem solving strategies like brute force, um, dynamic programming, and divide and conquer. And once you know those problem solving strategies, you have like a good base upon to which you build your um, algorithm knowledge. And in the user code, um, a lot of algorithms, uh, a lot of the problems can be solved by dynamic programming, um, greedy algorithms, and then graph algorithms. Graph algorithms appear um, more towards silver and um, gold and platinum. So if you don't know graph algorithms in um, bronze, that's fine because it doesn't really matter. And just to get past bronze, all you really need to know is how to program and have some basic problem solving skills. There's a lot of graph algorithms and I plan to make some videos on them. I um, mean, hopefully in the style of 3Blue1Brown um, with his Python library, Manum. So watch out for those. And I'll leave a lot of resources to actually learn competitive programming in the description below. And if you have any other questions about competitive programming, uh, feel free to comment. And once you learn like the theory with some of the books I link in the description below, that's not really helpful to solve problems unless you practice solving problems. So for that reason, there's just a, quite a few sites that like competitive programmers frequent. The main one being Code Forces. They hold a few. I don't know why that made that a theta, but it did. Code Forces and Code Forces is hosts like a few contests every week. I think one or two. And there's also At Coder, which is like super good for beginner contests. This actually gave me a lot of confidence. And Code Forces is like it is really fun. Their contests are two hours long. Usicos are four hours long. Code Forces has six questions, and then they're just like really nice, fun problems that you can attempt. And honestly, if you like doing code forces problems, then you should probably just like keep doing them forever because they're fun. And then you actually learn quite a bit while you're doing with it. And competing is usually a very fun thing to do. Ad Coder has um, a few like really nice contests that you can go to practice like really good problems on, and then develop certain uh, to develop to develop experience in like certain subsets of competitive programming. The name one is Dynamic Programming. They have a great Dynamic Programming contest to get good at. And then, of course, there's um, there's the Usico site. Usico has all the past problems that have ever shown up, and they also have a training page that I didn't really use, and I still wonder if I should have used it because it might have made it easier. But the training page had like it guides you through um, a lot of the concepts you'll need to get good at Usico, and shows you problems that are in the style of Usico problems. And they also have the past problems from previous years, so you can learn more about how Farmer John and his cows. Uh, about how Farmer John and his cows uh, make it so that you struggle to solve a competitive programming problem. But music is a really fun experience. And looking back at my high school career, I would say that working on Usico has honestly been like a pretty, it's been, it's been fun. Um, no, I, I got to Usico Platinum, and I can put that on my college applications now. But what I really think I learned is just being able to approach problems like analytically in an algorithm-based way. And I've learned quite a bit studying for Usico, and I think that's going to help me in the future uh, with preparing for college. And then it's also like made my actual just programming and like building projects a little bit better in the sense that I'm really thinking sometimes about my the efficiency of the code I'm writing and then just trying to write code in the best way possible while also maintaining good software development practices. If you have any video if you have any video ideas, questions, comments, maybe you want me to make a more detailed in-depth guide for each section for each division of Usico from bronze to gold to platinum, well not platinum because I'm not I haven't been to camp so I can't make a guide for platinum, but if you want me to do that if you have any other topics you want me to talk about that you think uh, might make for an interesting video, or if you just want to roast me, leave a comment below, and that'd be cool. You can also follow me on Twitter, at SidsCodes, at SidCodes, link in the description, and or sign up for my newsletter, newsletter, SidCodes, 
also in the description. But that's all I have to talk about really. Hopefully this helped you. This was kind of just off the cuff and I just filmed it like really quickly. So if it did help you, leave a like and subscribe. I don't know.